And welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. So uh, we are back with episode three of our Lutris review. And I apologize for the late release on this video, but I'm in the middle of a complete home renovation on the inside of the house. I'm actually down to uh, three, maybe four rooms to go out of ten. And I've had the flu, um, which I'm just now getting over. So if I sound a little bit congested or raspy, uh, that's why. Anyway, so pulling up Lutris. So tonight we are going to take a look at SNESX, SNES 9X, and then we're going to take a look at PCSX2, RPCS3, and we'll take a look at Dolphin, and then we'll wrap it up with Melon DS. Uh, that'll be the last of our uh, runners, our emulators. And then episode four, which will be the final episode of our Lutris review, uh, we'll take a look at uh, a more in-depth look at the stores. I'll probably create a GOG account, as I mentioned before, so I can show you that in detail. We'll talk a little bit more about Humble Bundle, Epic, and EA, and all that sort of thing. And then um, how to link your Steam account uh, to your Lutris install. And then um, we'll finish that video up with how to install a Windows game from start to finish. And to give you an idea of what's coming up next, um, after the Lutris review, after episode four, um, I'm going to take a look at installing NixOS. Um, I'll make a guide on that and a review on that. And also another video on Arch Linux. I did have an Arch Linux install guide a little while ago, but I'll go ahead and revisit that and redo it. So we'll cover those two, um, probably be two videos, uh, one video for NixOS and then one video for Arch. But a uh, viewer recommended it and I thought it was a great idea. So we'll go ahead and do that. Um, that'll be in a couple weeks down the road, um, but stay tuned for those videos as well if you're interested in those topics. All right, so that said, uh, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So as you can see, uh, Lutris is already up, and SNES 9X is already installed. And in case you uh, need a refresher on how to install a runner, come up to the three lines at the top right, go down to Preferences, go over to Runners. Then you can scroll through the variety of different emulators slash runners available to you, and then simply uh, click on the thumbs up, and you can uh, install that emulator. All right, uh, and that emulator will appear here on the left-hand side under uh, the runners. Okay, so let's go ahead and fire up SNES X9X. I can't pronounce it for some reason. Again, I'm just not getting over the flu, so I'm kind of groggy still. We'll go ahead and hit the, uh, hit the little play button, get the emulator started up. So the first thing we want to do is go through setting this up. So if you come over to Options, you want to go to Control Ports, SNES Port 1. Make sure you have uh, Joypad selected, unless you're using a mouse or a Super Scope. Uh, but I'm using an, an Xbox controller, a wired controller. So I'm going with Port 1 and my Joypad. Then we want to come down to Preferences. So the Preferences here, there's quite a few options to, uh, to mess around with. Uh, really for sound, um, I haven't messed with any of these. I kind of left them alone. Uh, buffer rate, uh, buffer size rather, is uh, 48 milliseconds. I'm fine with that. Come over to emulation. Um, again, I haven't messed with any of these settings. I didn't really feel a need to overclocking the CPU. I have a pretty pretty decent machine, as a lot of you know. So not much need for any of that. Under the file section, um, if you want to save your save states, you can click on the browse button and then select SNES or wherever your particular emulators or ROMs are stored. And you can select that file. Uh, the same goes for your cheats or your patches, your exports. Uh, you can pick and choose which one of these that you feel are, are necessary for you to save and then browse to any particular location you want to save them. Uh, now for our UI, um, just a couple of preferences here. I have my escape key set to uh, go from full screen to windowed. It's just uh, kind of a point of habit for me to always hit my, my escape key. But you can change that to quit the emulator completely or just exit. So I'll leave mine at exit. Uh, the background, you can change that from star field to snow. Hit apply. Uh, you can change it to color bars and patterns, which is kind of cool. And let's see what else do we have. Gradients and pixel art patterns. That's kind of neat. I think I'll leave it at that. Super Nintendo emulator. So now, the important one we need to go to is our joypads. So I have a joypad here on the buttons. So this is pretty self-explanatory. You just want to click on the X on your up button. And I'm using my, again, I'm using an Xbox controller, so I'm using my left thumbstick. So I'll just press up 
whoops, let me click inside here, press up, press down, press left, press right, select my start button, my select button, my A button, B button, X button, Y, left and right bumpers on top. Now for your A and B, if you're used to playing Nintendo games or rather on a Switch or using your Pro Controller, you might want to invert these and set um, B as your A. If you're using, like, let's say you're using an Xbox controller or a PlayStation controller, um, and you're used to hitting B on an Xbox controller for your A button for your Nintendo games, and obviously you might want to rot or flip these around a little bit. Okay, so we're going to close out of this, and we should be ready to emulate. So you just go to your file, go to open ROM image, select your ROM, hit open, and you're good to go. and exit out of that and we'll shut down the emulator all right so now we're going to move on to pcsx2 all right so for the pcsx2 um, we're simply going to go ahead and start it up and go through some configurations here now for the bios um, i happen uh, they're going to tell you that you are legally required to uh, take the, get the bios off of the ps2 that you own now, I happen to collect consoles. I've got about uh, 30 or so. This is a small example of, of what I have in my office here. Um, so I have a PS2, and I was able to get the BIOS off of that legally. Um, but I'm not going to give you any advice on where to get the BIOS. I just recommend go to eBay, get an old PS2, and then get the BIOS off of that. Now, uh, with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the settings. So we're going to go to settings. Uh, the first thing we want to do is go to our controllers. So for the controller, um, I have port one, it says DualShock 2, but actually I'm using my Xbox controller on this. So for the bindings, you simply click on the D-pad, we'll start there. Uh, click on the up option, press your up button, go to D-pad left, hit left, right, down, left analog up, left, right, and down, and you kind of get the idea. So I'm not going to go through all these with you. Uh, but you simply click in the box and then uh, press the button that you want to correspond to that action. Now, keep in mind that L2 and L1, that's obviously your trigger and that's your shoulder button. Same with the right side, so on and so forth. Now, I'm not really sure what the small and large motors are and what they do. Um, I just don't know, so I just left them blank. doesn't seem to affect anything. Uh, if you do know what they are, please let me know in the comments below. And there's no reason to save anything here. You just simply click Close. Now, going back to the settings, uh, we want to go down to graphics. And as with the other emulators, you always want to select Vulkan. That'll give you access to your current video card, whatever you have in your system. Um, I went with borderless full, uh, full screen. You can change that if you like. Um, other than that, though, I didn't really make any changes here. I haven't made any changes in here. Didn't really feel the need to uh, for rendering. I'm sticking with uh, the native PS2 default and bilinear PS2. Um, didn't make any changes in here either. Uh, the same with texture replacement. I just kind of left it as it was, uh, post-processing the same. And for audio, I, again, I left all that the same as well. Memory cards, you should have two memory cards. Uh, PS2, uh, both are eight megabytes. Uh, make sure those are, those are both selected. Network and hub. Um, I'm not playing over the internet, so no reason for that. And then folders. Uh, this is where your game lists are going to be stored, your cheat directory. And again, you can browse and set those to uh, the location that, that's uh, better suited for you. So really, that's all there is to it. It's pretty simple. Uh, the tricky part is getting your hands on your BIOS. All right. So with that said, let's go ahead and close out of this emulator. Oh, and I forgot to mention. Let me go ahead and uh, fire this back up again. When you are ready to navigate to your BIOS, once you've gotten it from your PS2, you simply come down to Settings. Go to BIOS, and then from there, you can actually link to where your BIOS is and load it that way. That's pretty simple. All right, so let's close out of this, and let's go to RPCS3. All right, so for RPCS3, um, we're going to need to do something before we actually get into the emulator, and that is we are going to need the system up software update for the PS3. 
So to get that, you're going to go to this website. I'll put this link in the description below. But it's PS, basically it's PlayStation.com, uh, support hardware PS3 system hyphen software. And then you want to scroll down to the bottom where it says uh, how to reinstall PS3 system software. You're going to click on download PS3 update. It's going to download for you and you're done. So we'll close out of that. We'll go ahead and open up the emulator. Now, to install the update, you're going to go to File. You're going to go to Install Firmware. Then you're going to browse to wherever your firmware is. And I keep mine in my emulation folder. Then hit Select. And it's going to want to update. Let it go ahead and let it do it. And we're good to go. All right, so I think that was it, it was. So now let's go ahead and do our controller. So you wanna go up here at the top and select on pads. Now the good thing about this emulator is that it does have some pre-configured um, controllers already for you. So up here in the handlers, you wanna click on the down uh, drop down menu. I have a DualShock 4, so I'm gonna select that. It's already set up with the proper inputs. So we can go ahead and save that. And then we'll go to config. And you want to go to CPU first and make sure that enable uh, SPU loop detection. Make sure that's checked. That'll give you better performance. And we'll go to GPU and make sure you have Vulkan selected and then select your respective video card. And then over here, um, the resolution scale, we want to go ahead and move this, uh, this little slider. So if you have a monitor that can do um, 4K, then obviously scroll over to 4K. Uh, but my monitor can only handle uh, about 150%, which is 1080p. So I set mine to 1080p, and I think that was the only option that I selected here. No, I did uh, my um, my anisotropic filter. I changed that to 16 for uh, better visuals as well. And then uh, that was it for that. An audio, no changes made to audio. Uh, nothing in advanced either, so I think that was it. So I went ahead and hit apply, then hit save, and then you load your games and you're good to go. Now when you load your games, you come up to file, uh, go down to add games, and then you can browse to wherever your PS3 games are. Hit select, and there you go. Now you can also, if you have multiple games, you can choose the grid option or the list option. The grid option, you can uh, adjust the size of your icons. All right, so we want to do one more thing, and that's come up to manage. Uh, some of your games have updates or have patches. You want to go to manage. You want to scroll down to where it says game patches. Click on that, and then this will show you all the games that have patches available. And if you only want to see the games that you have installed, you simply click on only show own games. And then you can select those games and then download those patches accordingly. And hit apply, hit save, and you're good to go. All right, so that wraps up RPCS3. Now we'll go ahead and take a look at Dolphin and then Melon DS and we'll wrap it up. All right, so for the Dolphin emulator, um, it's pretty simple, straightforward. So we'll go ahead and start it up. And with Dolphin, uh, a couple of configurations we need to make after you have it installed is you wanna to go to controllers. Uh, the good thing about Dolphin is it does have some pre-configurations already in it. So we're gonna go ahead and hit configure on standard controller. And you wanna come up to the top and use the drop down menu and select, um, I'm using an Xbox controller, so the SDL Zero Generic X, Xbox pad works perfectly fine and you can see it's already set. I did change my Z button to my back button. Um, left click interact input, uh, middle click to clear, right click and more options. But anyway, it should be all set. Uh, let's just go through it real quick to make sure. So the A button and the B button X button and the Y button. And again, if you are a uh, big Nintendo fan and you're used to the backwards A and B, then you can of course uh, switch those around to be more uh, more effective to your muscle memory. But everything else is fine, looks good. So we'll go ahead and close out of that. Uh, we'll go ahead and close out of this. And we wanna go to graphics. Make sure you're on, uh, the back end's on Vulkan. Then make sure your video card is selected. And I didn't make any other changes in here. Start in full screen, left that alone. Um, nothing in enhancements, nothing for hacks. And for advanced, I went ahead and sh uh, clicked on show FPS. You can pick whichever one you want. Kind of go through these and learn about them a little bit and then make your adjustments accordingly. Uh, nothing much to it. 
And I think that was it. So we'll go ahead and uh, fire up a quick game and just kind of see what it looks like. And we'll go ahead and shut down the emulator. Now you did notice at the top uh, right hand, the frame rate was about 30 frames per second. So let me uh, let me see if there's a configuration I can change in there for that. Enhancements maybe. I'm running at 3DX native, uh, 1080p. Uh, I'm not seeing anywhere where I can change the frame rates. Maybe it's in hacks. Advanced. I'm not seeing it here, but if I do find an answer, I'll, I'll bring it up in the next video on episode four. But I know there's a way you can increase your uh, frame rates. So we'll go ahead and close out of that, and then we'll move on to Melon DS. Okay, so with Melon DS, unfortunately, it doesn't play nicely with Lutris. Um, you can uh, force it to play games, but you're going to have very little control over the settings. So my advice is, if you are a big DS player... Um, you might want to just go ahead and download Melon DS as a standalone application and run your ROMs that way. The way to run a game through Lutris, though, if you're hell-bent on trying it, is to come up to the plus sign at the top left-hand corner to add game. Click on that. You want to go to import a ROM, and then you want to browse to your respective ROM location. Mine's going to be an emulation DS, and we'll check out Ace Attorney Investigations real quick. Open it up. Hit install. Hit launch. And as you can see, not a lot of control. Um, you're not going to have access to your save states or be able to do any configurations or make any changes to your um, your profiles, so on and so forth. So it's kind of a kind of a miss in my opinion. Uh, again, just go to your pop shop or to your respective store and download uh, download the application Melon DS and just run those games um, rather than using Lutris. All right, so that wraps up this episode. Uh, we did cover quite a bit, so the video went a little bit longer than I had anticipated. And again, I apologize for how I sound and my memory being a little bit shaky. There I am recovering from the flu. It was pretty nasty, actually. So uh, again, as I mentioned in the intro, um, the next set, uh, video will cover episode four. We're going to cover GOG, Humble Bundle, and et cetera. And then we'll talk about um, linking your Steam account. And I probably should have brought that up in the first video since most of us do have Steam accounts. And then we'll talk about installing a Windows game. All right. So that said, um, I thank you all for watching and thank you all for being patient for these videos. And I hope to see you next video. Stay safe out there and have a good one.